The underground cities of Cappadocia, Turkey, number more than 200 and are spread across the entire region. It is highly possible that there is many more lying below the surface, just waiting to be found. Of all the underground cities discovered so far, the most awe-inspiring is perhaps the Derinkuyu city. It was discovered by accident in 1963. When a local family was renovating a house, a wall gave way to reveal a passage that led to this underground network. According to National Geographic, it is 11 levels deep, descending more than 280 feet to the bedrock, covering an area of over 4 miles squared. It includes temples, tombs, shops, living quarters, and even livestock pens. Over 15,000 air shafts were built into its design and would have been enough room to comfortably house approximately 20,000 people. The underground city has extending passages that connected to other neighboring and underground water well systems, providing fresh water. What is especially interesting regarding this underground world is the evidence to suggest that they were hiding from something terrifying. A sophisticated security system consisting of a particular build design accompanied by numerous gigantic rolling stone blocking doors that would seal the city from the inside. Moreover, its multi-layered design meant that each level could be sealed off from the next level using this same system. Just what were these people hiding from? Whatever it was, they obviously preferred to run rather than confront it. The structure was excruciatingly carved into the underground rock and is as strong today as the day it was built, safely accommodating guests such as archaeologists and tourists. Whoever built the network obviously had an advanced knowledge of stoneworking, architecture, engineering, and the local geography. Aging the structure has proven very difficult. There are no existing quarries, waste piles, or tools to examine. Furthermore, there are no records documenting its construction or people who may have lived there. Also, unfortunately, many cultures have used the underground towns over the centuries. According to UNESCO, it is believed that the first signs of monastic activity in Cappadocia date back to the 4th century, at which time acting on the instructions of Basil the Great in order to resist attacks from the Arabs, the people should band together into small, local communities and begin inhabiting cells dug into the rock. Therefore, modern academia tends to conclude that they were likely built by the Phrygian people around 800 BC. Yet it is also a strong possibility that they are far older than this. By the bishop's instruction, they are to inhabit, not build. Therefore, it's safe to assume he was aware of their existence, rather than the person who thought them up. Some believe the underground caves were constructed by the very ancient Persian king Yima. Yima, attributed as mythological by many, is said to have had a lifespan of more than 900 years, a common feature of biblical figures as well. The Zoroastrian text Vendidad states that Yima built an underground city on the orders of the god Ahura Mazda to protect his people from a catastrophic winter. Much like the account of Noah in the Bible, Yima was instructed to collect pairs of the best animals and people as well as the best seeds in order to reseed the earth after the winter cataclysm. This was before the last ice age, 110,000 years ago. Although the Roman Empire are largely attributed with the invention of countless ingenious inventions, the truth regarding the origin of these innovations, however, may in all possibility be placed far earlier in human history. Many individual researchers, those whom are fortunately not responsible for telling lines of modern paradigm, have long claimed, just as mystery history is often posited, Many said developments can in fact be identified at many other, far older ancient ruins, many predating that of the Roman Empire by millennia. These repeated earlier discoveries, along with their inexplicably rapid societal advancement, is compelling evidence to support the postulation that, just like that of the ancient Egyptians, the Romans merely adopted lost technologies, along with many ancient architectural wonders, subsequently claiming them as their own, was merely to create an illusionary air of intimidation, which would have surrounded their claimed capabilities. This fitting, if highly controversial hypothesis could undoubtedly explain the ongoing mystery surrounding the remarkable success of the ancient Romans, their empire's longevity, and ultimately, their stagnation and eventual demise. We have in the past explored the astonishing irrigation systems of pre-Incan Peru, along with that of the sewage and water systems of Pompeii. A literal time capsule, long encased in volcanic ash, not rediscovered until very recently. Yet, thanks to this incredible preservation, 
we were able to identify compelling anomalous features like that of the heavily rutted polygonal roadways. Specifically, we focused upon the elaborate, highly sophisticated sewage system once placed beneath its still unexplained enigmatic roadways. A system still functional to this day, yet the most compelling of all is its metallurgy. The singular characteristic, which we feel proves beyond any doubt that such exquisite systems are not the work of the well-studied Roman Empire, but are instead a relic of a far more advanced, far more technologically capable, yet now lost civilization. For although like that of the unexplained Peruvian systems, it is still functional, a testament to the constructor past precision and workmanship, yet most interesting fact is that the pipes which served clean drinking water were all constructed from tin, while those transporting waste were made of lead. The reason why this is a compelling fact is because whoever built this system were fully aware of lead poisoning, yet the apparently more modern systems, presumably copied by Romans, were all made from lead. The reason for this is that at the time of the Roman Empire, lead poisoning was not yet understood. Cloaca Maxima, which translates as the Great Sewer, is yet another of these astonishing relics, actively being dismissed as the work of the Romans. Although its tremendous age is undeniable, and the fact that mainstream academia accepts it as having predated the Roman settlement itself, it is regardless still claimed as the work of the Romans. The Cloaca Maxima sewage system, just like that of Pompeii's and those of Peru, are all still functional to this day. This incredible longevity, we feel, is further proof of its original creator's tremendous capabilities. According to Pliny the Elder, an ancient Roman author and someone who could be perceived as one of the original funded opposition, claimed that the center section is centuries older than the surrounding system, with the entire relic claimed as having predated the empire itself by more than 500 years. Yet Pliny the Elder, who was tasked by Rome to explain the site's origins, claimed to have somehow known the intricate details surrounding who built the Great Sewer. After researching this relic, we've found large volumes of funded research concerning its past function and the claimed construction during the Roman Empire. However, regardless of this claimed tale of events, the fact that this technology, this incredibly advanced structural technique would have been in its infancy at the time it is currently claimed as having been made, yet is still in use today and has not needed any substantial modification for over 2,000 years. How can one explain how a seemingly new technology was utilized and perfected first time during this brief window in world history? The Cloaca Maxima is undoubtedly an incredible ancient relic, one which we find highly compelling. We have often explored the many curious tales of a particular ancient global catastrophe. The Great Flood, a global deluge featured in countless ancient accounts. Yet additionally, we have also recently explored the compelling evidential corroboration to these ancient claims, supportive geological and scientific evidence, which intriguingly support their indeed once being such a flood, one of biblical proportions. The geological data supporting the change in sea levels are deserts once seabeds, submerged pyramids, ruins, and not to mention the tales of Atlantis. However, one area which is rarely, if ever mentioned in these same libraries of history, are the underground cities once built. All of them, found on nearly every continent, were each buried beneath the earth in such a way as to avoid the land itself. The largest of these, Derinkuyu, discovered by complete accident during a house renovation. It strongly suggests that many more may still be laying undiscovered, waiting to see light again, resting undisturbed in complete darkness for unknown millennia. Thousands of connected tunnels have already been found and explored all over Europe, thousands of miles of interlinking underground tunneling systems, all built as if those who created them found ground level either inhospitable or of a mortally perilous place to dwell, this for some unknown reason.
Darren Kuyu, as mentioned, a site we have explored in depth before, not only has curious multi-ton rolling door stoppers located at strategic locations, Stone's modern man is incapable of moving, but was also reportedly lit by a natural gas pocket they tapped, tunneled a pipe through the complex with holes positioned along which, set alight as if a London Victorian street, ingenious if true regardless of the genius that went into Derinkuyu itself. Alien corpses found within remains of the Hypogeum in Malta, it must be noted along with 7,000 other headless corpses, yet these complete bodies lay there alongside them. The oracle room within, just like the rumors of the natural light technology of Derinkuyu, also possessed, yet still possesses, its own extraordinary example of ancient high technology. With an altar stone in the oracle room placed in such a location, complemented by extraordinarily perfect architectural design, amplifies one's voice incredibly well and throughout the structure. Thousands of kilometers of groundwater-flooded caveways have recently been found in Belize, Honduras, El Salvador, along with many other locations littered ancient ruins, remains, and inhabitations, once this flooding is dated, we believe it will push the currently held chronology of man, and indeed these groups age, back massively, a subject we will cover soon. However, these digressions merely scratch the surface of what we intend to explore further and indeed share with all of you. So any support in this quest is greatly appreciated. To help us out, check the description for links. Why did ancient man seemingly hide underground? Why did they make such gargantuan efforts to dig, design, and then seemingly live in these places long term? These are questions we find highly compelling.